Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting edition of How Do I Do This Anyways? Today, what we're going to be doing is making our laser cut layout for our Automata project. Uh, this should be pretty quick if you follow along. If you don't, eh, well, you might have a more difficult time. So, we're going to make this looking thing. It's a drawing, but it's a custom drawing. So, I'm going to walk you through doing that and how to turn it in. So, what we want to do is just go File, New, and then we just want to select this ANSI inch drawing. It could be inch, it can be millimeter, that doesn't really matter. Uh, what we now want to do is we need to customize the sheet so it's the same size as the laser cut, the laser engraver, laser cutter that we have in our classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and right click where it says sheet one and say edit sheet. I'm now going to come down here and say custom size. And I'm going to make that a 12 inch by 24 inch because that's what our laser cutter bed is. And it should change it to be some different size. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this stuff that we don't need. We're gonna just right click and delete the border and we're gonna right click and delete the title bar because we don't need them. Now let's get into some stuff that we do need. I'm gonna click my base view and it'll automatically pop up with the last file that you had open because it's trying to guess what you wanna do. Um, that's the front of my box, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, yeah, that's what I want. But we need to make sure that we are not doing a raster view. None of the hidden lines are showing. None of these boxes are clicked. And we are doing a one-to-one -one scale because we want this to actually show up at the size that it's supposed to show up. So I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that across the, to the top. And I'm going to do another base view, but now... I'm going to go and I'm going to find my project folder. Everything needs to be in your project folder. All your files, all your assemblies, all your everything should be in that project folder. And now I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom. I'll just do that one. Click open. And now I'm going to use the rotating buttons on the view cube to move it around until it fits on the page the best. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm just going to drag it up here. Now I'm going to do another base view. I've done the front, I've done the bottom. Let's go ahead and find the top. Easy enough. Yep. All right. One to one view. Okie dokie. And now my sides. Let's see. Yeah, wrong one. There we go. One to one view still. Click OK. Now I'm going to drag that one right here. And since I want two sides of that, I'm just going to right click this and say copy. And I'm going to right click and say paste. And there we go. All right, cool. We're almost there. Now, the important part. What we're going to do now is we're going to come up here to annotate. And we're going to come over here to this edit layers button and it's going to pop up with a menu and you want to come down here to our visible lines and we are going to click that and we're going to get red but we need to define a custom color after you've done this once it should pop up with that custom color but we need to make sure that this is a 25500 red we need it to be monochromatic as red so we're just going to click that Say OK. Now also we need to change our line weight to 0 0.001 inches. That is one one thousandth of one inch. Now I'll click save and close. And it should change your lines to be something like this. Now what this is changing it to is what's referred to as a vector operation. This is where the laser is going to go in really intense and it is going to burn through through exactly where that line is. Now that's fine for like these holes and going all the way around it. But when you get to these letters, like when you're burning that out, then there's nothing to hold that O in place. There's nothing to hold the centers of the B. Also, if the laser path is too close to another laser path, that material will actually catch fire and you'll get a big burn mark in it. It's not that hazardous, it just makes your piece kind of annoying. So what we want to do is we want to avoid having text that is embossed or engraved in our uh, 
projects. So if you have that, what I would suggest you do, first off, if you've got a sketch that is the text, like if I come back here to front piece, where's my front piece? There we go. I've got some of it is embossed and some of it is not. This is just a, this is a sketch with text on it. I can come here and hit the plus sign next to the view and I can right click this where it's, this is the part, this is the link to the dependency of the part. And I can go ahead and say, get model sketches. And now any sketches that are on that face of that model are going to become present. Okay. Now, if you've got it so that way you have your text, you've got whatever symbol you actually want in this, what you can do is you can come into your original part and then you can edit that. So like for my embossment, if I want to go ahead and get that edited, I'm going to go ahead and just delete the emboss. Now, sometimes it'll pop up and just delete that emboss. Other times, if I like extruded it, let me see that. There we go. If I click that, and if I go to delete that, yeah, let it delete. It might pop up with a little menu that says, um, if, it, if you want it to delete consumed sketches. If you just want it to show up in your part view, you don't want to delete the consumed sketches. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Actually, I got to save it first. Save, and now it should want to pop back up in here. Either way, another way you can get text to show up is by just making a text box on a piece that you want. Okay, so. And this follows all the same rules as your normal text boxes in Inventor follow. And there you go. Now, the special thing about this, I need to go back in. Let's see. Save that again. Go back to here. Now it's embossed like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go File, Save. Well, save as, and I want to call this something, you know, very distinctive. So that way, when I open up the file, I being me, open up your file while I'm trying to laser cut it. I want to know that this is the laser cut one. So I want it to be named like laser cut, your team name, and then your initials, yours being your author as the author this is my second one. So pops up, boom, right there. Now, another thing, we need to make sure that this all pops up in our project folder. So let's find that project folder. Automata 2024, wooden box, boom. It is there in the project folder with all of my other files. Now, what you're gonna notice is that there's these temporary files. Do not click on, delete, drag, copy, leave those alone. If it says .tmp, it is not something that you're going to be able to play with or use, so leave it alone. Now, what this ends up looking like, when I go to engrave this, it's pretty simple if you have followed all of the instructions for me to, to engrave this. Then I just have to set the machine up. But you see how this is red right there? It's going to go through that vector operation, whereas this will be a raster operation. We're just going to burn that text to be black. You can burn pictures, images, text, whatever you want on it. And it comes out pretty sharp. But that's besides the point. So now I've got this thing saved. I've got all of my part files in my project folder. Now, how do you turn it in? Okay, this is a part where people have a lot of difficulty with. 
I have the Dropbox right there. I'm going to click on that Dropbox. And, of course, there's nothing in there yet. You need to go ahead and upload that whole project folder. So we want to do a new folder upload. I need the whole folder. Okay, so then you want to find it in your flash drive, or in my case, it's on my desktop. Upload the whole folder. This may take a minute. It's going to want to say, hey, we're going to upload a bunch of things. It's going to upload all of the files that are in there. That's fine. I want all the files. Because what this allows me to do is it allows me to open these. Okay, if you send me just the drawing, I can't open it. It'll tell me that there's a bunch of missing pieces and whatnot, and I can't open it. I can't burn your part. So make sure you send me the whole part folder, the whole project folder. Even if there's extra parts in there, that's why I asked you to have that unique name so I can find that very, very quickly. So this is how you do this. Make sure that you do it correctly. Follow the tutorial, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Take care.